Um, you guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and we're live on Instagram tonight. So you guys, I'm Brandy with Brush by Brandy and usually you guys come here live on Tuesdays and you guys see Leah Noel with uh, Leah Noel Design Co. And so I'm popping in and taking over her live for tonight. So you guys have a special Brandy on Tuesday and I'll be back on Thursday in my regular time slot as well. So sorry to confuse you guys. Um, We'll let Leah rest at home. Maybe she'll pop on and be watching with us from her couch with her feet up. I hope she's taking it easy. Um, we've been really busy this week um, with a new transfer release and lots of pieces coming out. So anyway, you guys are live here on the Dixieville Paint Facebook page and we are going to work on a piece that I'm working on tonight. So this is the piece behind me that I've got going. Okay, so the first thing I know I'm going to get questions about is this color. It's a really pretty mauve color and I mixed this. So this color is a custom mix of Dixie Belle paint in aubergine, muscadine wine, and apricot. I took those three colors and I mixed them together in a container, which is right here. Which is right here. So, oops, I'm going over my scissors. Okay, so when I mix a color, I save my old Dixie Belle paint containers when they're uh, reasonably clean and I can wash them out, I will save them for mixes. And, and that's what this is here. And then I took my uh, three colors and I wish I could tell you what the mixture is, you guys, but here's how I mix. I will start with one color and I'll say, okay, I feel like this needs to be a little more red and I'll add a little bit more of the muscadine wine. I feel like it needs to be more purple. And then I need to lighten it up, so I'm going to put some more apricot in it. And that's kind of how I came up with the color. So it's a little bit added at a time to where going back and telling you that it's a one-to-one -one ratio would be um, near impossible. But this is the color that I came out with. When I mix, I always over-mix. Over-mix, you guys. Don't under-mix. Mix generously. So you could, if you know that a piece like this would take about 8 ounces of paint, mix yourself 16 ounces of paint just to be safe. And then I end up, I just save these and I've got custom color mixes in a Dixie Belle container. I can write the mixture on here um, if I like, but that's what this is. So I've got my custom color mix, which is um, aubergine, muscadine wine, and apricot. Okay, so that's my first color. And then I shaded it with just the apricot by itself. And I know that these two colors are gonna coordinate, you guys, because my mix has apricot in it. So they both gonna, they're both gonna have similar tones. So these are the colors that I've got on here. It's actually four paint colors, but I, one is a mix, and so I end up with two colors. Okay, so then I've added, this is the new um, Burgundy Roses Transfer by Redesign with Prima, and it's got exactly the shades that I'm working in. It's got a little bit of tea rose in there, a little bit of aubergine. I could even pull out some, I usually take my transfer when I know what I want to use and I will start with my transfer piece and then I can look at it and pull out shades so I can see it's got a little bit of mint julep in it it's got a little bit of sea glass in there there's the aubergine the little bit of tea rose um, and then you know little pieces will have slightly different colors on them um, so I pull the color inspiration out of my transfer for what colors I want to emphasize Where'd you get that transfer? So this is um, this is the new Burgundy Roses transfer by Redesign with Prima. These just came out yesterday. So you can go to my page, go to my Facebook page at Brush by Brandy. My first post on there is with this piece. It has a link in the post for where you can look for transfers. So head over there if you want to look for it. But we're going to add some more dimension to this paint. So I started out shading with just paint. And now I'm going to do a little bit of shading with waxes too. And that just gives me that, that other layer of dimension. So I chose not to add a darker paint color. I'm going to add dark waxes instead. And this is where it's kind of fun uh, working with the Dixie Belle products because a lot of times, you know, one, one product can replace the other and you can pick and choose what you prefer to work with. If you like working with waxes, use wax. If you prefer glaze, use glaze. Because sometimes they can replace each other pretty easily. Um, and this is one of those cases where I could have shaded it in a darker color of paint, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it with wax. So let's talk about shading with waxes. Okay, I use black wax on most every project I do. Most every project. Black wax is one of my favorite things. Okay. Um, Dixie Bell waxes are really soft and creamy, but when I'm shading with waxes, I like my waxes old and firm. <laughs> Old and firm. So here's what I do. 
Um, I've got an older container of wax. You guys can look at this one. Can you guys see it's cracked? It's a little bit dried out. Looks like shoe polish. Yeah, it looks like sh it is. It's firm. It's firmed up because it's been exposed to the air. You can take the lid off of your wax. You can buy a little four ounce container that you use for shading. Take the lid off, let it sit out. Let it firm up a little bit. And then I will use this just for shading versus my newer wax. You can tell because this is an old uh, packaging. We don't use this packaging anymore. Um, and my newer wax is much softer. It's creamy, it's supple. Um, it's really nice for all over application, but when I want to control where it's going to go, I want it to be a little firmer, and that's where my older waxes come in. So are you so. saying, uh, just just for the record here, yeah. the newer wax isn't as good as the older wax? No, I'm saying they totally do different different. Jobs. I'm stepping outside of the wax, I by know. the way. I was, I was thinking, I was thinking... <laughs> I was thinking last night, like, you know, so coming on and saying, is one better than the other? No, but it's like saying, you know, a miter saw cuts a miter better than a, you know, a, I don't know, jigsaw. Like, you choose the right tool for the job, and this is just where I like a firmer wax for shading. So I'm going to use this one tonight, but I brought this out so that I could show you. I'm going to close up my nice, soft, new black wax, and we're going to shade with the ugly, old, crusty black wax. Buy a little container, you guys. Um, the, the, another thing is uh, the Dixie Belle gilding wax, the black gilding wax. These will be back in October. It, the gilding waxes are firmer. That's why I like these for shading. So um, keep an eye out for that too. But we're going to just use the regular wax. Okay. I do not have a top coat on this. Are you guys scared right now? That's everything you're told not to do. Especially with black wax. With black wax. I'm going to put it on my raw paint and I'm going to show you guys how I can control it. Uh, even without a top coat on it. So, let me show you guys my brushes. Can you not bump the camera, please? I'm sorry. Yeah. So sorry. I got a new tripod today, <laughs> and I love it, you guys. It's really nice. Okay, I have uh, this caddy right here of all my artist brushes. I have specific brushes that I like to use for uh, shading waxes. Let me show you guys what some are. I keep them over here in this corner so I can always find them really easily. So these are a few of my favorites. I've got, they're all natural bristles, but I've got narrower versions. I've got a little bit fatter versions, fatter still. And then these guys here, I use these a lot. I rarely wash out my wax brushes every, I don't know, four or five uses, I'll come back and rinse them out. So I'm gonna have a bunch of different natural bristle artist brushes. You, these are craft store items. Um, super easy to find and I'm going to have a rag and I'm going to have a container of baby wipes. This will remove your waxes you guys if you really mess up. My paint uh, has dried overnight so I've got um, pretty dry paint. I'm going to start with one of my narrower wax brushes and I'm going to fill it with my old crusty hard as a rock. It's not like a rock. It's, it is like a shoe polish. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to ride this crevice right here. I'm gonna make, give myself a line. I'm just laying on a little bit of wax to work with. And already that adds a little bit of definition in that crevice. Let me pick a different brush. That was probably a little fatter than I wanted. So what I compare this to is like putting on eyeliner. Me too. Yeah, that's exactly what you were thinking. So weird. So I'm gonna ride this crevice and I'm giving it some eyeliner. I wanna emphasize those low points. I, I just switched out to a little bit smaller brush, still a natural bristle artist brush, but just with a smaller tip, a really flat tip. So you guys, you can go to a craft store and you can buy packages of artist brushes, natural bristle or synthetic, and you get, I don't know, 25 of them is like $5. They're not, they don't have to be super nice. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this little fatty right here and I'm gonna smear this wax out. So here we go, here's the question. You don't put clear on this first? I did not put clear on this first. You can, so here's the thing. What the clear underneath does is it allows you to control your waxes better. If you feel nervous, your paint's gonna absorb whatever you put on top of it. So if you feel nervous about doing this, that clear coat is your protection. I'm it's just enjoying your, all of these life lessons in the comments. It's your insurance policy. That's what that clear coat is, okay? I'm. So I'm taking this fatty, I gave myself a little bit of wax just in this corner, and I'm just softening that line. 
Now I'm gonna keep working this out. I'm gonna come out a little bit further still, only my hand is gonna get even softer because I just wanna carry it out in like a little bit of a shadow. No, the spot right here looked a little heavy, so I worked that spot a little bit. Okay. So I've got my shading with my paint in the center here and I'm just adding a little bit of shading with waxes. Now I'm gonna take my rag and I'm gonna wipe it back. Now, because this is not sealed paint, it's not gonna wipe back very well. If this was sealed paint, wiping over it like this would nearly wipe away all of my wax. But I didn't seal this, it's got some bite on it. Okay, let's come over here and I'm gonna do a spot and I'm gonna show you how, if I felt like, oh my gosh, I screwed that up, I had raw paint, um, you know, the, gen the general rule is to seal your paint beforehand. I wanna show you guys that you don't have to, and there are different features that you get with putting dark wax on unsealed paint. And that bite and being able to wipe it back and have it stay a little bit is part of one of the perks. So I'm gonna deliberately put on too much wax over here. Let's really just box this. Is that like just too here. much makeup? Yeah, just a totally smoky eye look. That's not what I was going for. Baby wipes. Oh, well, Leah um, came on hey, saying Leah. thank you. No, Leah. Oh, Leah. Oh, hey, Leah. I hope you're sitting tonight. I hope you have a cocktail in your hand. I hope you have your feet up. Um, so I'm going to take a baby wipe. Dixie Bell waxes are water-based, and the paint is super durable, you guys. So this has dried overnight. Um, I can rub at it a, a fair, fairly reasonable amount without taking my paint back off, even with it just drying that one night. So if I don't like this at all, I can take just a baby wipe. And I can wipe it back off, okay? So, that's unsealed paint. That's my raw paint right there. Okay, now I want that spot to dry. Before I try to do this, I don't wanna do it where it's wet. That will make it harder for me. But I wanted to show you guys, you do have a certain amount of play. Now, I do have some still in my crevice right here. It's not perfectly clean, but I was able to correct it enough that I could come back and do it again. Now, you don't wanna over rub your paint because it isn't it, it's not sealed. It doesn't have that extra layer of protection. So you've got a fair amount of wiping, but don't be too aggressive with it either. Um, so let's come up here and I'm gonna come around the outside of this box. For those in Camberland, I wanna zoom in. Camberland? Camberland, hello. What are you zooming in on? This is getting awkward. Okay, so this brush right here, one thing I'm gonna say about it, it needs to be washed. It's really firm. <laughs> firmer than I'd like it to be right now. So that's usually when I know that I need to wash my wax brushes. They get too firm and I just have a problem working with them. So it's gonna work for right now. So I just put, gave myself that little bit of wax to work with and then I'm gonna take this, this fatty. I didn't add any wax to this brush. I'm just using it to work out this line of wax that I put on here. See how soft that looks? And then see I came out a little bit and with an even softer hand. Okay, and then I can come back with my rag. Wipe that a little bit away. Wax, I do a lot of put it on, take it back off again. So, so you've seen me now up here and down here. Put it on, take it back off again. And it, you know, it, it's meant to look like old dirt sticking into the paint. I'm gonna take my Skinny Artist brush Now I'm probably gonna put flat clear coat on this because I want it to have a really matte finish, kind of a, just a really dry, chalky finish, I think would be really pretty on this piece. So I'm gonna use flat clear coat. Same thing again. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of gilding wax, just a bead of gilding wax around this molding on the door. And I've got this nice shaded effect with my transfer, with my gilding wax and my hardware right here. It's gonna make for a really pretty door on this piece. My transfer's not all the way done, you guys. I got semi through putting it on, but I do have a portion I'm gonna add up here too. So what you're looking at isn't the completed look. So I hope that baby wipe trip makes you feel a little bit comfortable that even if you decide to try your waxes on raw paint, it is possible. You're taught to put a clear coat on first and that's because it gives you control. But if you feel comfortable enough, you don't have to do it that way. And then I'm just taking and I'm softening up that line even still. Just wanna leave that little bit. 
embed it in my paint. That's really pretty. Okay. Can you go, uh, you know what, let me go. I'm gonna go oh yeah, I'm not moving. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working too hard Sorry, here. sorry. You and Leah, you just- Don't try to inconvenience me here. I'm gonna grab my gold gilding wax and show you what that looks like along that, along that molding. I'm kinda in my way. Okay, so this is the new gold gilding wax by Dixie Belle. This, these are coming out in October really soft creamy wax and I'll just take a little bit onto my finger and once I have I don't want to do it over here I still need to brush at this and if I brush over I'm gonna pull my and I'm just gonna add a little bit of gold so how long do you usually wait for the wax to dry before you coat it okay so do you go to wipe a clear coat over this here's my secret here's my cheat you guys it's kind of unfair it's no longer like a magician with the secrets. It's I not... know. I spray my clear coat. What? When I add decorative waxes like this, because it's so purposeful, and I do take a lot of time shading with the wax, I come back and I will spray the clear coat over top. Hmm. Because if it's a water-based wax, so, so if I come back and brush a clear coat over the top of this, it will want to. It's going to reactivate the wax and want to pull it a little bit. You need to wait for your waxes to firm up if you're going to brush it. I cheat, I never deal with that because I always spray it. Um, and then I leave this perfect, smooth, soft finish, stays in place, I don't touch it. But you just know if you're gonna wipe it on with a sponge or a brush, you can pull a little, it is normal to pull a little bit of those waxes back off. Michelle so, was cool and knocked it out of the park for me before I could even get a chance to yeah. respond. The colors you're using, the transfer you're mm -hmm. using, like knocked it all out. Okay, ready? I'm going to give you guys the list, okay? I'm going to keep shading with my waxes while I tell you. My colors, two colors. My first color is a mix. It's a mix of aubergine, muscadine wine, and apricot mixed into one container to form this mauve color. It's a really pretty mauve. And you can make this more purple, more red. You can lighten it up with the apricot. So I couldn't tell you exact ratios because when I mix, I add colors slowly to each other until I get exactly the color. I always over mix my colors. So I had plenty to do this piece and I'm actually doing a mirror that matches and I had plenty of paint. So over mix your colors when you're mixing. First color is a three color mix of aubergine, muscadine wine and apricot. Second color is apricot. That's just my highlight color in the middle that I shaded with just apricot in the centers. So it's actually four colors, but I've got them in two. two. This transfer just came out yesterday. It is the new Burgundy Roses transfer by Redesign with Prima. Go to my page. The first post you'll see at the top I just posted today is with this piece and it has a link to where you can find these transfers. Now to go back a step, how long do you wait for that wax to dry before, okay. I mean, you spray it? Uh, I could spray it tonight. I could spray it tonight. I don't need to wait for it to set up if I've got a sprayer. If you're going to brush it, you need to let it firm up a little bit because you're gonna be putting friction against it. It's gonna pull. Like if I try, <coughs> just like with the baby wipe I showed you guys. If I try to wipe this right now or, or brush over it, it's really gonna be fragile. So. Give it at least 72 hours if you want to brush over it, if not, more. Even at 72 hours, you're still going to pull a little bit of your waxes. And with such a deliberate application like this, you guys can see why I, why I spray my wax clear coat. Because I do this on most every piece I do. Um, I do a lot of shading with waxes. It takes a lot of time. Um, I will sit here and go around every detail on this piece and it takes a lot of time. I love the look of it. There is nothing like a wax. If you guys ever took art classes in you know, middle school or high school or whatever and you got to work with oil pastels, waxes remind me of oil pastels. They have that smearability and it creates this soft ethereal effect that you just can't get with a glaze or, um, so I just love the look of that. And then same thing, I'm gonna take my shirt it's my rag, and I'm going to wipe it back a little bit, which actually smears it a little bit, works it into the paint a little bit. And then I can come and I'm going to put my gold gilding wax around my molding. I don't want to put my gilding wax on until I've done both sides of, so I've done the top and the bottom of the molding. 
and then I can come back and put my gilding wax on last so that I'm not still working that area I'm not going to smear it gilding wax takes about 24 hours to set up fully in small amounts like this I seal my gilding waxes underneath my paint and then I'll have gold hardware on there and you can kind of see how the look starts coming together so even though it starts pretty basic with just the paint and then the transfer is another layer and then my black wax is another layer and then my gilding wax is and each one adds a little bit of interest to the piece so i'm going to come shade this side of my door and then i'm going to add a little bit of depth to the fluted moldings on here by adding black wax into those recesses too so this is my black wax you guys i showed you guys in the beginning it's old it's had the lid off it's dried out it's firmed up i like to have an old firm wax for this Dixmo waxes are really nice and soft, which they're beautiful. If I've got to wax this whole piece, you want a really soft wax. But when I want to deliberately put it in one place, I like a firm wax for that. So I give myself a little bit of wax to work with and then come back with my fatter brush. So I also, I told you guys, I don't wash these brushes out after every use. My, my this brush keeps a little tiny bit of wax in it. If I feel like I need more than more smear than what I'm getting, I'll just do tap, tap, tap. And this wax is so firm, it barely picks up anything, but it's just enough for me to shade a little bit darker with that, with a really soft hand, just like a feather duster. Just riding that ridge, just so it picks up the very top tips of my paint, and that's it. I'm not going to shade over my transfer, I don't think. I don't want to um, distort that image. So I enjoy this process. I really like working with waxes. I could sit here and be totally content just waxing a piece like this in all the details and crevices. So now this is a fluted molding I've got on the side. It's got fluted ridges in it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ride that fluting Go ahead and do more than one at a time, you know, because I'm efficient like that. I add black wax to some degree on every single piece I do. This is besting wax in black. I like the black gilding wax too. I'm showing you guys the gilding waxes. They will be back available in October. Keep an eye out for those. And then this, I'm working in a smaller area. So let me take here, let's take this guy. It's a fatty, but it's less fat than its little friend over here. Huh, it's like Abbott and Costello. So this is where this is where I'm telling you guys, get all these different like little artist brushes in all different sizes, and then I can I have whatever I need, and then I can smear it out just writing inside that fluting. It just adds a little bit of shading, but it's a very soft shading because wax has that really soft look, you know, versus a glaze. I, I like glaze when I want really clean, crisp lines, and I like wax when I want really soft, smooth, smeared outlines. Now, that's my general rule of thumb. Everyone's got different preferences. You know, I will choose a wax whenever possible over glaze. I just much prefer to work with waxes. Okay. So what's the difference between black wax and gilding wax? The gilding wax is oil-based and the besting wax is water-based. Um, the oil-based wax, the gilding wax, is much more concentrated. So let me show you guys this. Let me find a small little area. I might have to come over to the other door. I'm fairly done here except for way down here where you guys can't see anyways. Um, I have a transfer I still need to do up here. I could do it up there. And thank you to those who have asked. We are not near the fires. I guess if you live in California, you're near the fire right now. Yeah. Um, we're probably about two hours from anything that's actively burning. Our air quality is terrible, but we are safe. We are safe. I put a post up on my page kind of explaining um, the situation. Thankfully, it hasn't, you know, we've had lightning storms going on that are causing the fires. And nothing struck here where we are, thankfully. Um, so this is black wax, the black gilding wax. This right now is not available. This will be back when the new gilding waxes are released in October, okay? Um, so it's much more concentrated. 
So that smeary, smudgy, ethereal effect you get with the um, besting wax, you can get it with this, but just expect it's going to be much, much more concentrated. It's a little bit harder for me to work it out. It's that oil base. I can still take it off with a baby wipe. So what I will usually do is, is if I want to darken a crevice even more, even more, um, like make the crevice super dark black, I will, I will do this process and then I'll come back and put gilding wax in the corner because it's so much more concentrated. It's just much more concentrated. Um, Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing up here, but I, I do want to use my besting wax. I don't want to use the gilding wax for this. I want it to be a little bit softer because my color palette is much softer. I don't want, if I'm working at a dark color, I guess, would be, would be another place um, where I need a darker black. It's a darker black. If you go buy mascara at the store and they have black, and blackest black. The gilding wax is the blackest black. And I'm in shade right here. <laughs> Gina, am I high or was there a kid whispering? <laughs> <laughs> Gina, are you, are you hearing voices? You guys, let's make Gina feel crazy. Uh, Even though my kid just walked out. Yeah, there was a little one that was out here. <laughs> they know they know when we're live to come out and, and just whisper quietly. It's taken us a long time to get here, you guys. When I first started going live, my kids had no clue what to do. They were all over the map. Okay, so I think that's a really soft, pretty look. Um, I don't have my hardware. It's over there. Let me show you. But it's a uh, couple white poles. They're round medallions right here, and I think in the gold. So let's finish adding the gilding wax to this door. What do you guys think? Does it look pretty? See in that green dish right there? Thank you. Not right, good with colors. I'm going to. Um, so these need to be cleaned. I haven't worked on my hardware yet, but you can imagine this pole right here in a, in a gold. It looks like I can just clean them and they'll clean up really well. So I'll take these and I'll soak them overnight in, in a 50-50 mix of white vinegar and water and scrub them with a SOS pad, and just a scotch pad, and I'll see what they look like then. And then I can decide if I wanna add gilding wax to the hardware, I can do that too. It really depends on what they clean up as. So I don't know in that case. Let's show you what gilding wax looks like on hardware though. You can use your gilding wax on your hardware too. So I'm just using my finger and just writing this crevice here. So all this detail work, I want, I want to show you guys what it looks like with the plain door without the wax and then what the, what the black wax shading and the gold gilding wax, what, the, what difference it makes. This is the detail work. I got a little fat fingered there with my gilding wax, but that's okay. We can't tolerate that. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I still have to clean this, so I'll just clean the gilding wax off too. But you can take your gold gilding wax, and I could put this in just, just using my fingers to find the... Bam! I definitely want to clean this pole. But this will show you from a dingy old piece of hardware. I could use a brush to get it in. Find one. So I'll just use a, a brush and I can get it into some of these crevices a little bit better. And then I'm just going to wipe it back so it looks a little bit aged not so new looking. Kind of rough it up a little bit. Some of that patina is still showing through. And it's got the same shade of gold because I use the gilding wax on both, but it doesn't look, it doesn't have to look new or sparkly, but you could put over as much or as little on as you want. You don't have to buff it back. You can make it new and shiny. Um, so that's kind of what, what it's going to look like. So then you can come back over here and see the door that I haven't done yet. And look at the amount of interest that that black wax adds to this look right here. Why do I have to go mobile? Oh, sorry. OK, 
okay? So I still need to do this door. Um, on a flat surface like this, let me show you how I use the same concept on a flat surface like this drawer. So that's a little easier when you've got a molding to shade around. But when I've got a flat surface like this, I've got no moldings here. I've added dimension just with my paint shading. Got my transfer here. So I'm going to take this little fatty right here, and I'm not going to use the smaller brush like the eyeliner guy. I'm going to use just this brush. I'm going to tip it in just, just the tips. Just the tips into my wax. I don't, it takes so little wax to do this, you guys. That's how come I have this oldest container of wax ever. I wish I had a date on it. This is probably my first container of Dixie Bell wax. Just tip your brush in a little bit of that wax and just feather, I will just feather this black wax around the edges. Now do you tap, tap, tap? Um, or do you tippity tap, tap? I'm just, it, in the wax, don't rub it. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to pick it up. I just do tap, tap, tap. What if you give it an extra tap? No, then you did it wrong. <laughs> totally did it wrong. Now, there have been a few that have asked this question. Yes. What are you doing to the top? Oh, um, it's stained. So it's not sealed yet. That's why I've got a towel on here. I took it back to the bare wood and I'm, it's going to be stained. Um, so I'm protecting it so that I don't get paint up on here. But right now it's raw wood. So that's what it's going to be. Right now it's raw wood though. Okay, so I just will start shading around the edges. I'm using a really soft hand, this natural bristle brush, barely any wax on my brush. This is not sealed paint, you guys. This is going right on top of my raw paint. Okay, and then I can take my rag, smear it out. Wax is smeary, smudgy, so when I wipe it with my rag, it just kind of smudges it, gives it a really smooth effect, and that'll be kind of my effect where I'm just going to shade around the corners a little bit, even this out. So it looks like a darker color of paint maybe, but I've just shaded with waxes instead. Okay, and then again, if I feel like, oh my gosh, I totally messed this spot up, I hate it, take one of my baby wipes, oh. and I can wipe this wax off of the corner. It's water-based wax. Now you're just showing off. As long as I don't over rub my paint, I can take it right back off again. I like this spot down here. And then I'll wait for that to dry and I can come back and redo it again. Oh, Robin, you have no clue how difficult it is for me. To keep this G-rated. Like all <laughs> these know. all these things. I'm just a quick wit. I'm really proud of him, you guys. It does take a lot. I know Sean's sense of humor. It takes a lot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. On this piece right here, I've got some transfer I'm going to add up here. I'll probably fill this in with a few smaller pieces. I like to cut my transfer up and I do the larger pieces first and then I'll fill in with smaller ones. So this whole transfer, I cut up, I cut up everything out of it. I started with scissors and I just hacked my transfer up. So now I've got all these little flowers and I'll just start placing them one by one. You know, not overboard, but I could decide if I want to add something small. That would be cute, kind of coming off of this guy here. So I will fill in, but I start my design my design with my basic larger images, and then I'll fill in with the smaller pieces of it. So that's all you guys, I'm on the details huh? of this. I'm gonna finish it up. I think I'm gonna stain my top in um, probably a mix of gray and tobacco road uh, voodoo gel stain. I want just that really soft, light gray. And then with a matte finish on this, oh, it's gonna be really pretty. Kind of. Kind of um, old Victorian is what it feels like to me. Is anyone else? No? Bueller. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to pop off. I hope that was interesting. I'm shading with some waxes. Thank you guys for letting me fill in for Leah. Um, she'll be back with you guys next Tuesday, and I will be with you at my regular time slot on Thursday, Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, also here on the Dixieville Paint Facebook page. Um, you guys thank my husband, Sean, for being here and helping us out. 
Um, you guys can use like, the link I put above in the post to find your local Dixie Belle retailer if you want to purchase any of the um, items I used here. Um, you could also uh, use that link to purchase online and I earn a small percentage from those sales, which I always appreciate. Um, and I think that's about it. You guys have a great week, okay? Thank you.